today we're going to talk about effective nuclear charge in periodic trends. And we started this in class a little bit today, um, but just want to give you another review of it um, and an opportunity to hear it again, and hopefully it'll make it a little bit more clear. All right, so just as a review, a periodic trend is a property that has a pattern across a group or um, across a period on the periodic table. So it will um, tend to go up or down um, depending on the particular property. And so the two properties that we're interested in um, for periodic trends in this class are atomic radius, and the uh, radius of an atom is the distance from the nucleus to the outer edge of um, the electron cloud. And then the ionization energy is the amount of energy that is required to remove an electron from the outer shell of an atom. Okay, and so what I'm going to do now is talk about the factors that um, influence those properties. So we talked about in class um, that the more shells you add, the bigger the atom gets, and then the farther away those outer electrons are from the nucleus. Um, the other factor, other than the number of shells, that affects um, periodic trends is uh, effective nuclear charge. And we talked about this a little bit today, and that's a balance between the positive charge that's in the protons in the nucleus and the negative charge that is shielding the electrons and causing repulsion um, with, the, with that outer shell. And you can probably see this a little bit better here with this illustration. So here we have the nucleus uh, as this purplish sphere with a Z on it, um, and the electrons are shown as little blue spheres. Uh, and so a, an electron in the outermost shell is going to feel the force of attraction to the nucleus, which are represented up by these blue arrows, but it's also going to feel repulsion, which is represented by the orange arrows, between itself and the electrons that are in between. So it's a sort of like a game of tug of war, where the nucleus is pulling the outer electron in toward it, but in addition to having to use some force to pull it in, it's also got um, other forces pushing the electron back out at the same time. And so um, the way we represent this uh, mathematically, just to give us a general idea of what Z effective is, is Z effective is equal to Z, which is just the number of protons, minus S. And S represents the number of shielding electrons. So this is going to be all of the core electrons uh, that are in the, um, in the atom. So now let's just do a couple of examples um, that can tell us or give us an idea how we would calculate Z effective. Um, so if you go to your periodic table and look at carbon, for example, um, let's see what Z effective is for the outer electrons in carbon. <clears throat> and so carbon is number six, and it has six protons, so we know that our Z is going to be six. So now we have to figure out what S is, and for that we need to know how many core electrons there are in carbon so that we know how many electrons there are creating this repulsion between the nucleus and the outer electrons. Okay, so carbon has electrons in the second energy level, um, but that energy level is not full yet. So we can only look at the ones in the first. Um, so that means that we have two core electrons because it's just the ones in the 1s that we count. So Z effective for carbon is going to be 6 minus 2, which is equal to 4. So now if we go over a little bit in that row in the periodic table, uh, take a look at oxygen as an example. Oxygen has eight protons. It's an atomic number of eight. It also has eight electrons. Uh, and it, just like carbon, it doesn't have a completely full second energy level. So we only have two core electrons, just the 1s electrons. So Z effective for oxygen is going to be 8 minus 2, which is 6. And you, so you can see as we move to the right across a row in the periodic table, our effective nuclear charge goes up. Okay, so just as a review, for atomic radius, as we go down a group on the periodic table, the atomic radius gets larger because of an increased number of shells. All right, And then as we go across, the number of shells does not change, but the number of protons does. And so our Z effective, our effective nuclear charge goes up, and therefore the radius gets smaller as you go across the periodic table. All right? And if we do the same thing for ionization energy, as you go down a group for ionization energy, the um, electrons get farther from the nucleus, and so their hold 
um, is not as strong and so it doesn't require as much energy to remove them. So the ionization energy goes down as you go down the group. And then as you go across, um, the electrons are more tightly held because the nuclear charge is going up. And so ionization energy goes up as you go across a period. All right, now that wraps up our discussion of periodic trends, and you should be able to explain these trends in terms of the number of shells and the effect of nuclear charge.